Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial where today I'm gonna show you a little trick in Photoshop to get multiple masks on one layer. In fact, you can get as many as you want on one layer. It's a little workaround. Uh, if you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. Uh, I'm gonna start doing a little bit more of these kind of shorter Photoshop tutorials. The really long Photoshop and Illustrator and Lightroom and everything else tutorials, they're not going anywhere, but let me know how you like some of these short ones, just kind of sprinkled in every now and again. You know, the best gifts come in small packages. Isn't that what they say? Let's jump into Photoshop and check this thing out. All right, here we are. And I've got this little composite you can see here. If I just Alt or Option click, there's my background and a few adjustment layers later, uh, moving this model from this image over to here, we've cut her out. now. When you're working uh, with something like this, there are times where you have a mask in place. See, if I uh, shift to click the mask to shut it off, we still have the background and all the mess from the decontaminate color around her hair. But you may want multiple masks because maybe you want to preserve your original mask. But when you zoom in, you realize, eh, you know what, I could clean up the edges a little more. Now, this is kind of a bad example because the edges are really, really nice. Uh, but let's pretend for a minute that they're not quite as nice as you would want them to be. You would probably want to add a second layer mask and work even more non-destructively. And this is a quick tip on how to do that. So here I've got the layer, right? The model in the layers panel. We've also clipped a bunch of layers into her. So a bunch of adjustment layers that are affecting just her and not the background. There are these layers that are kind of helping to just blend her in a little bit. What I want to do is select her as well as any layers that are clipped to her, right? So I'm going to select all those layers. Now, if you didn't have all these layers clipped to her, you would just select her. But I'm going to select those layers and we'll go layer and choose group layers. Now that we've done that, I'll name the group model or whatever. I tend to like to keep my layers panel a little tidy. And then we come down here and add a layer mask to this layer group. We've now added a second layer mask to this layer. There's the original layer mask. Now we've got a separate layer mask up here. And on this layer mask, I could zoom in on the hair, grab my brush tool. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to choose. I've got this custom made hairs brush and I am going to reduce the spacing and turn on shape dynamics just to kind of mix things up a little bit. Uh, and maybe I'll just set the roundness to rotation because sometimes that's a nice touch and I need to make the brush a lot, lot, lot smaller. And then here I would grab my Wacom tablet. I'm painting with black. I'm just going to paint away some of this stuff. And I can come into here and just begin painting away some of this extra haze on the edges of her hair with this brush. And if you don't think it's doing anything, it is. You can see it's just this nice kind of fine hair texture. And it's just going to go in and clean up that stuff and allow the hair to remain looking very realistic while clearing away some of that haziness around the edges. So we can just come through here and say, yep, clean that right up for me. Voila. And just work your way through it. Now, this masking technique, you can only take away. I can't add anything. I would have to go back and destroy the original layer mask if I wanted to bring back some of that original image. Uh, but in this case, we just want to take some stuff away. So that's great. Now, I should point out another, uh, another couple times that I use this technique of grouping a layer or grouping multiple layers and applying that second layer mask is when, let's say, I'm overlaying text or some other object and I want to apply a bunch of different textures to it. Maybe I want like a grid. Uh, dust like texture, maybe a streaky, you know, sort of rain type of texture, uh, just a bunch of different textures, shattered glass, things like that. I will apply that graphic or that piece of composite, whatever, apply my first texture in the mask, just paint with black and dot away to create the grunginess. Then I'll group that layer just with itself, create that little layer group, apply a second layer mask and work with my second texture on that second mask. That way I keep all my textures separate as I'm masking and blending images together. It can be a really, really useful technique uh, for something like that. So yeah, you could just continue coming through here and clean up the edges. And the beautiful thing about this technique is, let's say we realize we want another mask here. I can just hit the little group layer icon again. And now you can see, well, let me drag the layer group into this new group. I can now add a layer mask to this new layer group. And if I add a layer mask and let's say I do something stupid, crazy, like say, you know what? We're going to bird box her real quick. We're going to just make her disappear right through there. Voila, we can do that. And you can see that it is still affecting those layers underneath it, but we're not touching the background. So it can be a really, really useful technique for just splitting out layers uh, and just applying a ton of layer masks. And for those of you saying, I can apply a second layer mask, 
You can apply a second mask by hitting the mask icon again, but this is not your normal pixel-based layer mask. This is a vector mask. If I right-click, I can see it identifies as a vector mask, which really limits what we can do with it. It's great for some things, but limiting when it comes to a lot of the stuff we would do when we're talking about composites and photography and a lot of different things. Vector masks are great, but sometimes you want multiple layer masks on your layer and by grouping layers together just like I've done I think that's the best way to do it in fact maybe the only way to do it a little hack a little workaround for you today in Photoshop if you enjoyed this video guys hit that red button and make sure you subscribe to my channel or don't subscribe you don't have to but it's just a nice touch and hit the little bell uh, notification icon if you do that'll alert you when new videos arrive thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate you all so much for learning a little bit about Photoshop and a little double or triple or quadruple a layer mask Photoshop tip trick hack today, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.